are you always diagnosing who the worst defender on the court is, or are there certain the guys oh, on the scout? Before the make game a play, even make a play, start. make a play. He's got a guard. Yeah, he's got a guard. Before the game even starts, he's got a guard. Hold on, red dot. Who the red dot out there? He got a guard. Really? Hell yeah. Because why? Why would I listen? It's not that. Look, everybody believes they can score on everybody. So do I believe I can get a bucket on Pat Beth? Of course. Of course. But why would I go against him if I can go against this here. guy? Yeah, <laughs> like, let's go. We Wait got a second. I'm laterally quick. Listen, I don't right. know who you're fucking talking about. You understand about. how much energy I'm just going to save? Pat Bev Pod with Roan. Shout out to Drake. Shout out to Drake. Shout out to our guest that's coming on later today, Spencer Dinwiddie. Yeah. This guy is, uh, the people are really going to like this interview. Yeah, no, nah, it's going to be fire. People are going to go absolutely crazy. He's a survivor. He's not going to give up. Yeah. He's not going to stop. What? No, chill, chill, He's going to work harder. Yeah, I like that. Shout out to Beyonce. Yes. I had to go to Houston this weekend for unfortunate times. You know, my, my, my daughter tore ACL. Tore both meniscus. Are you serious? Yeah. Both? Yeah, little little tears, little tears in both. Oh, uh, what's that? Six week, eight week recovery from meniscus? Yeah. Uh, ACL though, a big one. Six months. You get you think a, a freshman girl starting on varsity, probably the only only girl starting on varsity, freshman in Houston, Texas. We just left Olympic goals this summer. Uh, obviously everyone sees how much I post and how much, how, you know, athlete of the year, eighth grade, you know, got to pick what high school wanted her. Uh, so yeah, it's a hard time right now for the Beverly family. Obviously. You How's know, your mental? Sad as like a little girl should be. So I'm like, <clears throat> I'm dad as like, okay, baby girl, this is what you go do. You go be sad. I'm gonna let you know all your emotions before you even have them. You go be sad. That's you sad. Turn that into mad. And then when you get mad, pick up some shit. Pick up a weight, pick up a book, like pick up some shit, pick up some shit, read it, pick up some shit, lift it, transfer mad into anger. Because if you in pain and mad and doing all these workouts and reading all these books, you go come back better than what sad is going to get you. There was a quote from Tom Brady recently where he echoed that sentiment. He was basically like, I'm looking for any little thing that could piss me off yeah. about the other team. Like, fuck these guys. Yeah. Like, yeah. using that anger because that's a differentiating yeah. factor. You're like, they said, what about us? What the yeah. fuck are they talking about us? And just watching him say that fired me up. I think that anger can be a very useful tool if you know how to harness it. Yeah. So it's a crazy thing. The doc, obviously, the doctor who did my microfracture is doing her procedure. Dr. Lowe. Walter Lowe. Shout out to Walter Lowe. But when her mom tore her, her mom tore her ACL. Her mom tore her ACL like five five years ago. Her mom like, Pat, who do I go to? Oh uh, yeah, go to Dr. Lowe. So Dr. Lowe go end up doing the mom and dad and daughter knee surgery. He's got the family rate going. I mean, this is wild. Like, what the hell? I mean, we can laugh about it now, but you know, I hope she she sees this and she does watch the pod and, you know, we, you know, it's been UConn or or like or nothing her her, her whole upbringing. So. Uh, Obviously, we know, you know, she's still young and she has a ton of basketball left, but I just wanted to show her some daddy love. You I think that, there. so So daddy her goals daddy. are unaltered. She's still trying to go for Utah, UConn or bust. Yeah, UConn. UConn, U, UConn and recently she said Arkansas because she said, I want I want to finish what you started. I'm like, what the fuck? I, I'm in the NBA. What the fuck you mean? You finish what I started. I was <laughs> freshman of the year. She's like, I'm going to take my own test. Yeah, right? <laughs> 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 You even got Tyler laughing. Tyler don't never laugh. He said, yeah. Wow. So I turned in a, 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 a paper that wasn't mine, Ron. That was the, that was the, the that, it wasn't the, the, don't know what, never mind. This is about, this is about baby girl right now. So I wanted to give you that energy queen and all the girls that's out there who, who, you know, ACLs are like the biggest like injury for women who play basketball. I wonder why that is. I don't know. But, uh. So any little girl out there, any pros out there, mind you to take care of those quads, take care of those calves, protect that knee, protect that knee. Injuries are horrible. You gotta have her watch that movie Inside Out, that Pixar movie. Ron, about I cry, bro. And I'm, I, you know, me, I don't, I can see one of my good friends die right in front of me, and I, like, I, I won't shed a tear. I go to my grandpa's and grandma's funeral, don't shed a tear. My family really think I have a problem. Like I woke up, I woke up that morning like with tears in my eyes. I was so sad for her. I was so sad. I didn't, 
obviously, you know, if it was my boy, I shut the fuck up. I punch him side the head and let's go. All right, do your fucking let's time. Ain't no time to be weak, time to be strong. But when it's your girl, <laughs> when it's your girl, your baby girl, that shit hit different, boy. Yeah, hit the different. last thing you want to see is her down, sad, hurt, or feeling weak. So, yeah. you know, so you like, want to give her that strength. Yeah, so I just want to give her that energy on the pot. Love, 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 love. That is uh, very nice of you. That's very respectful of you. And I think that we can learn a lot from Spencer Dinwiddie on this exact front because he went through that yeah. same type of injury. So I got to have my daughter eating fruits and um, ste uh, and steaks. Right. Yeah. And having, uh, what kind of, no seed oils yeah. and sea moss? Yeah, sea moss. Say less. Say less. All right, well. Say less. Uh, let's get into this interview. Let's I mean, pe it. people are gonna, you know. Now this is gonna be fire. Yeah, enjoy this, mm. guys. Let's take a second and talk about New Amsterdam Vodka. <sighs> New Amsterdam Vodka, the official vodka of the Pepe Pod. Can with, I say that with Ron? With Ron, yeah, and uh, with Ron is always with New Amsterdam Vodka Ooh. because I stay with that thing on me. New Amsterdam Vodka, born from an uncompromised. You mean passion. that thing? You mean that? New Amsterdam vodka. I'm talking about the big bottle. Oh, oh. I'm not talking, about, talking about the rinky dink, which is also fantastic. I'm not talking, talking about the neck. Pink Whitney. I'm talking about the long neck. Get grab them up the like double this. barrel. Yeah. Okay, say less. And they're they're built from a uncompromising patch for great vodka. Everybody knows that. Everybody knows how smooth it is. Everybody knows that it's 93 points. Mister 94 feet mm, drinking 93 point. Rated vodka, five times distilled, three times filtered. And while making great vodka is a passion, New Amsterdam is most inspired by those who stay true to themselves. Mm, and we that's, do that. Well, that's 100% what we do. And we that's should. what I respect about you. And that's how I respect about New Amsterdam vodka. Honestly, they mm. really stay true to who they are. And they're built from an uncompromising passion for great vodka. I can say it a million times, and it'll be true every single one of them. Go to your local liquor store. Go to your local convenience store. Wherever you can buy New Amsterdam vodka, you go ahead and find your wins with New Amsterdam vodka. And do that stuff today. Love, love, love. I love, love. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Gotta give him, gotta give him the intro. I gotta, gotta get you the intro. So right, his, his intro, he do like a freestyle every intro. Just some yeah. bars for you, something light. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Hold on. Are you ready? Let's get it. Okay. <laughs> Scorer, distributor, defensive stopper. He does work in BK, but he's not making whoppers. Say that. Okay. 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 <laughs> when it comes to game winners, he's not ignoring the call. So if we're talking Spencer's gifts, it's not a store at the mall. Chill. Chill. Okay. 20 million Chill. a year. <laughs> he's living big in the Sin City. Point guard. For the Brooklyn Nets, it's Chill. Spencer Dinwiddie Chill. in the building. Chill. Let's that's go, hard. bro. That's, that's, hard. Hard. that's hard. Welcome to the that's show. Hard. Welcome to the show. That's hard. That's hard. Welcome to the show. And I think we have to say, maybe the best goatee in the NBA. Oh, man, I try, man. <laughs> <laughs> I really think it's up there with one of the best goatees. I know Mike Woodson, I, I put in that <laughs> conversation. <laughs> but, uh, and elite goatee. Spencer Dinwiddie in this bitch, man. Yeah, man. Thank you for being thank here, for bro. Coming, bro. Uh, thank you. A legendary guest to have on here, uh, a Brooklyn Net. And uh, it's an exciting time to be a Brooklyn Net. You look at the squad, it seems like that. that's a, 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 nice, uh, a nice squad over there, an uh, emerging squad over there. Sure. What do you see for the future th this, this year for the Nets? Uh, I mean, you got some guys with some playoff experience. Obviously, uh, you know, the team itself doesn't doesn't own its pick. So we, we definitely go try to win, try to get in the playoffs for sure. Um, what what the ceiling is, we don't know. Um, obviously, we're coming together as a unit. Uh, you know, Ben's back healthy and mm. we're trying to see uh, where we can take it exactly. Damn, yeah. y'all in the lab. Yeah, yeah they yeah. really are. I love that. Ben's healthy. You ever go over to to Dumbo, get some Julianas? See Ben, you know what I mean? You ever pop over and say, yeah. what's out there? Nah, Juliana's my spot for real. So, <laughs> yeah, I so know, I bro. I told about. you all the time then. Juliana's pizza spot, pizza spot in uh, in Dumbo, they have three that are lined up. They have Grimaldi's, then Juliana's, and then Inazio's around the corner. All three of them are like a 9.0 or above. Well, yeah. They're like incredible. This whole block has That's like incredible... Day. But you gotta like wait in line. Did you wait in line when you went over to to Juliana's? The first time, like back in like 2017, yeah. But like now, nah, I can kind of just like yeah. Hey, Who do you? You, you don't have to call nobody. What's your name? No, but it's like an old man that runs the place. It's yeah. like an old guy. It's not like you're like you, you know a PR story? person, huh? You know the story of it? Uh huh. Like, All right, he's okay. the dude from he's the dude from Grimaldi's. Oh really? Yeah. And then like they had like a, a business riff, so he opened up the store right next door and was like, "Really? I'm gonna take out your business." And the lines like back up into Someone each other. Someone beat you to a fact that you didn't know. He's locked yeah, in, I mean, but he's I mean, a Brooklyn guy, I mean, though. I've been in Brooklyn. Oh, go, 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 go. This is multiple sticks. Say that, say that, say that, say that, say that. So when y'all back in the lab, 
you got the experience coming back from the USA team, obviously. Um, with Mikael Bridges, mm -hmm. Cam mm -hmm. Johnson, mm -hmm. being back. I like y'all. Yeah. I like y'all. Obviously, you know, you got to go hoop with it. But, like, for the most part, I like what y'all got. Y'all got size. Y'all got experience. Y'all got a ton of size. Um, I like the the rim protector. What's his name? The young Nick. guy. What's Nick. Claxton? Claxton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yup, yup, yup. Like yeah. him. Like him. They solid. They really yeah. are. Especially they still got Cam Thomas, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah. yeah and Ben solid. Simmons coming back, I think, really changes things. Like, uh, have you, like, kind of thought about how you two would fit together uh, on, on that team? Yeah, I mean, I think um, if you look at Ben when he's at his best, you know what I'm saying? He's getting off the rim. He's being yeah. uh, a, a monster in transition, right? And then he makes plays for others. So, you know, we hope that there's enough shooting out there um, with Mikhail. Cam Johnson obviously is is elite. He's always shooting 45 from three. Um, you know, cat and shoot wise, I've, I've been a good three point shooter in my career. So, you know, we hope to space the floor for him. Um, he gets out, gets in transition, makes plays. And obviously you got Nick playing above the rim. Uh, and I like that. Like, you know, he's coming in like, obviously, you know, he signed a real nice contract with the Nets and, you know, he was the starting point. But like to even have that mindset of coming in like, yeah, let Ben come here and be Ben. You know what I'm saying? Like that shows a lot of poise and a lot of respect, especially coming from your peers and coming from, you know, somebody that hasn't played in a while. So like, I like I like what they focus on. I like the Nets. Yeah, fans will have whatever opinion of uh, Ben Simmons, but as a teammate of his, like you want to do all you can, obviously. But he's nice though. Unlock. Like people forget yeah. he cold. Exactly. Like, yeah. like, like you got to remember, like Ben in his best form is a far more athletic Draymond Green with less, obviously, three point shooting. But Draymond's not really a, a big time three point guy. He hits it sparingly. You know what I'm saying? But when you talk about the defense IQ, reading, passing lanes, quarterback in the defense, able to guard one through five, like he's one of the only people in the league Ball that can handling. Do that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then obviously he's, he's getting out on that break. You know what I mean? Um, he, he's never been fortunate enough to play with Steph and Clay, obviously. You know what I'm saying? So I think if he was in that type of environment, you would see those same type of triple doubles, accolades, things like that. And he still was getting them shit. Yeah, you know I mean, and, and he was getting them with, without that. Uh -huh. I mean, he, well, he did have JJ Redick, but, but you get what I'm saying overall. Well. Uh, like this it. this is your second uh, your second stint in uh, Brooklyn. How are things different this time around? Because that last stint was it seemed like a lot of fun. It oh, seemed like shit, you guys were having a fucking yeah, blast. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, when they yeah. was doing the uh, yeah, yeah, they, yeah, they yeah, do yeah, yeah, yeah. What is that? What is that called? Getting sturdy. Well, getting sturdy. I, say that. Say that. Yeah, I'm less. not a dancer, so I don't right. know. <laughs> yeah, I was hitting that. No one was dancers, dude. I don't think Jared Dudley was a dancer either. But he was still. Yeah, Dudley was hitting that shit. Yeah, he was. But nah, I mean, it's funny because. Like we talked about, I've been here for a minute. So we went through all different versions. Like the 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 first year I was here, we were like tanking after like mm -hmm. Jeremy Lin got hurt. You know what I'm saying? And, and Brooke Lopez was our best player. Then we traded him for D'Lo. You know what I'm saying? And then D'Lo had his kind of like really uh, uh, cement himself as one of the premier guards in the league, all-star. You know what I'm saying? It's the first time we broke into the playoffs. You know what I'm saying? Young guys, like as you said, having fun. Growing together. Karis LeVert on that team. Jared Allen on that mm -hmm. team. Joe Harris was establishing himself. That was hard. As, Wow. Yeah, one of the best three point shooters in the league. Duds and Demar Kerr were our vets. You know what I'm saying? Then coach we, was great. Kenny coach was, was great. Coach Kenny's was crazy. Great. Kenny, he's a sister. Ken, hey. uh, oh, yeah. Big say. time. Big, he's big great. Time. Yeah. He, he, he turned down a Hornet job. Yo, for sure. Head coach. For sure. They're like, nah, I'm cool. I'm going to stay with Golden State. Yeah. I'm cool. And, oh, and really? Kenny, Kenny, one of them guys, one of them coaches that even as you move on to another place, you genuinely feel like he cared about oh, you. Oh, God. You know what I'm saying? And the NBA wow. business. Wow. So. Mm. When so you that's rare. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, when you feel like somebody genuinely care about you, man, like, like, that's, that's, that's hard to come by, mm -hmm. and it, and it, and it, it makes you feel, and he can attest to this. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It makes you feel uh, uh, bought in in a different way. I appreciate it. Yeah, you yeah. appreciate it. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Because you understand, in a lot of ways, you're a chess piece in yeah. this thing. You feel me? So that was that was big time. And then we obviously went to the swing for the fence, max players, and all that other stuff. Um, and he goes the extra mile too. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's what he like. That's the that's the biggest. He gonna thing. be out there playing with you yeah, until he, he, until he tore his quad tendon. Then he yeah, he was oh good. He be out oh, there he, he actually tore his quad. Yeah, he used to hoop like he one of those got coaches. Us. Yeah, yeah. What yeah. percentage of coaches do that? Um, fifty. But then, head, head coaches they, though. I'm not, not head coaches. You right? Not head no. coaches. He would he. Would, he tore his quad ten trying to ISO Jared Allen. Yeah, <laughs> Straight yeah. up. Kenny Wild though. Straight up. Like, wow, I yeah. thought he was gonna get a bucket too. Yeah. Straight up thought of his body was get a bucket. Yeah. Tore Head coach is low number. What percentage? But they're older, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But you know, they're older. So they, they have excuse. But as far as coaches period in the NBA, I don't know. 50, 60. You know, some guys are scared to talk to, you know, you gotta think some it, some, you know, the coaches that's behind the bench, they uh 
you know, they might be third, fourth year guys, maybe new guys. Yeah. So, you know, you might have fucking LeBron James on your team. Well, you might have, you know, my fucking big personality, Pat Bev on your team. Like, you don't know how to talk to him yet. Like, you know, so right. like, it's right. a, obviously it's fear there, but you, you, you got some coaches that you'll come in, you know, they adapt up and that just be your relationship. And there's some coaches you come in, you'll hug and it's be love. Mm-hmm. And, that's shot relationship, you know. So like everybody it's different, different. relationship. Yeah, everybody different. Yeah. Do you, you guys ever have a coach that like you know is terrible at basketball? Like he just he's just not a, a good <clears throat> athlete or a good basketball. Not player? a head coach. I had a I had a see the thing with me because I like to think like my one of the biggest brains in the league. Like you know I actually know what's going on offensively and defensively yeah. and like scheme wise, ATOs, what coaches want to run, like plays sets people want to run. So like I had a coach that's like younger than me. Trying to tell me like, yo, Pat, uh-huh. and I'm I'm cool with coaching. Like, coach the shit out of me. Like, curse me out, Pat. The fuck is you? Like, coach the shit out of me. But like, if you're wrong and you're younger than me, I ain't trying to hear you no more. The rest <laughs> of you like, just shut him out. Yeah, shut that shit up. Yeah. Bro. Usually, usually to me, it's it's the ones that are analytics over anything. Mm. Like, I get analytics over a lot. You know what I'm saying a lot of stuff because you want to play efficient basketball. You want to give yourself the best chance to win. But like, analytics over anything doesn't really make sense just because like you gotta remember it's a it's a bang bang play all the time like we're moving at crazy high speeds like sometimes you're gonna have to shoot the midi or like sometimes you're gonna have to go Take off or go you. off script yeah. you know mm-hmm. what i'm saying like it's not gonna all just play out like you know what i'm saying a, a computer system so you know those those are usually the ones that haven't really played for real yeah. because if you have a coach even for example kenny right kenny was analytics over most things like 85, 90% of stuff, but he did understand like, yo, okay, like deal's going to get to that elbow midi because his game ain't really finishing over the room. Uh-huh. So that's my that's guy. And we're we going we to understand that he can break off and do that. Now, Joe Harris, there's no reason for you to do that. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Stay in that but corner. he has that flexibility where like some people might get get a deal and be like, oh, you got to just start dunking on cats. Yeah. And it's going to be like, bro, you, you don't do that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So true. When we uh, talked to D'Lo, he refused to tell us who you guys were listening to in the locker room that year when everybody was getting sturdy. Oh, well, I mean, shoot, if it's if it's clubhouse secrets, then. Well, you got to leave clubhouse. Yeah, Good try, though. That was smooth. Why? Because uh, it was 6'9"? You just don't want to say it was 6'9"? You still not play that nah, little yeah. boy. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't nobody playing that shit, man. No. Yeah. It was 6'9". <laughs> I'm just curious. I'm just trying to learn, dude. I'm just trying to learn and get sturdy with, uh, with the rest of the guys. Uh, when you were in Brooklyn the first time, what did you kind of learn about the, the area? And was it significantly different from some of the other cities that you've played in uh, as far as the community and the culture? Because everything is kind of right there in Brooklyn. Yeah, I mean, I've been in uh, Detroit, D.C., Dallas. Um, I time. mean, shoot. Yeah, Sha. I was inside for a couple For a little bit. Six. Split second. Split second. Anybody say for the boys, you know, I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I, was, I was there for a split second. Um, no, nah, I mean, I think uh, it's just a lot of love around the borough. You know what I'm saying? I mean, obviously everybody knows in New York you can do anything you want. You can get to any place. Food's open late. It's just... It's a completely different mm. vibe and culture. I mean, Chicago might be the, the closest that I've that I've been to, but you know, DC, Dallas, and Detroit are nothing, nothing like this. I think I know the answer to this question, but I have to ask it. Mm. You think you got your respect in this league yet? Hell no. I, I agree. <laughs> Hell I no. Agree. And I, I I think people forget like the uh man came back from like crazy injury. Like people Forget it. Like they be thinking injuries are just like something that just like a band aid on it, and you just. Or it's just a certain amount of time, and then he's back. Oh, you and come back one hundred percent. Like you supposed to come back two thousand percent better than you left without like missing any like. Man, for real, had to sit out almost what year, year and a half, almost like for real. So explain the reasoning in your mind why you feel like you're not getting that respect. I mean, we the entertainment industry at the end of the day. Yeah, I'm saying it's. What what butts am I really putting in the seats? Right. Like if we if we just gonna keep it a stack, mm. you feel me? So like, it's it's a lot better story to talk about other things that that make you money. You know what I'm saying? Does that make you feel like you should be doing something different to put butts in the seats? Do you feel like you're not living up to something, or you're content in your role? I mean, I never really been that guy. You know what I'm saying in terms of just how I approach the game. You feel me? So it, it's it would be hard to change now. You know what I'm saying? Like if if you had told me this at like 13, 14, right. would I have like, but I didn't, nobody made the league in my family. Nobody knew anything about this. So, you know, this is just me saying, I want to, I want to hoop. 
You know what I mean? And then and then and then getting there, finding a way and, and getting there. And to me, it was about just winning. You know what I mean? Like from from every level, every stage, like you could see that like that was the focus, that was the goal. I mean, even in college, like when I went back from my junior year, I sat my whole starting five down. I was like, yo, if we win, like if we really do this, like all y'all gonna have a chance to like mm. make some money. And I was like, but if you know what I mean, y'all ain't focused on that. I'll just get my stats and I'm leaving regardless because I was already on the draft board. So I right. sat them down and was like, yo, right. this is how we That's plan this. Straight up. And I mean, at the time- What was their heard, response? They just looked at me like, what you gonna say? Right. That's like, it was like, okay. Because yeah. I mean, at that point in time, you remember like freshman year, I was good. It put me on the, on the radar, right? Sophomore year, then I had a chance to leave and I went back. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Um, and junior year, when I, when I came back and sat them, sat them down, they knew that I was being honest. They knew what type of time I was coming on. I was like, yo, and then when I got hurt that time, like we was like 16 and one, mm. like we was rolling. Like, and during that time period, like some of their names were starting to pop up on like the second round. Wow. So it was, it, I mean, that's the way I approached basketball since I was a kid. You know what I mean? And, and now I'm here. And so, yeah, like if I had some more, probably like. Technical foul. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe a little shit like that. <laughs> yeah. Just get more texts. <laughs> really? People love that. People love motherfucker yeah. get texts. How many texts did you have last year? Maybe three or four. Let's double that, brother. Yeah. <laughs> Let's quadruple that. Let's get those texts yeah, up. Yeah, right. But yeah, my yeah. texts weren't even yeah. fun. My yeah. texts, like, I, one time I dunked on somebody and said, and one, nigga. Hey, Tech. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll get him out of I'll tech. Him, I said, <laughs> like, what? Yeah. Like, yeah why? It was, it was a weak tech. Right. Well, I mean, they was no. mad at me that game, so. What? That's preposterous. But, I mean, if, it's, if that's what it takes, it seems like you look at the stat line. The numbers are there. You mm -hmm. know, the, the numbers are there for that type of respect. It seems like uh, anytime that you're on TV or doing interviews, you are saying something interesting. Uh -huh. You know, you're uh -huh. not afraid to like stir the pot or stick up for yourself or your yeah. teammates. Uh -huh. So uh, I'm trying to like kind of connect the dots of, of why you feel like it's it's not happening. I mean, I told yeah. you like second, second round pick, I was out the league, got cut. D league, got back on a fledgling team. Then we kind of rose together. You know what I'm saying? Finally was able to put up, obviously, production on like winning situations, conference finals, things like that later in my career. But, you know what I'm saying? Outside of a couple like big time dunks, it's still like, it's not super flashy, mm -hmm. any of that stuff. And, and you know, some of the things I say when I'm, when I'm speaking, like it is controversial, but it's also rude in fact. So it also doesn't necessarily always get the clicks and All shit. Right. They're like, because somebody will be like, Spence, you suck. And I'll be like, yeah, I've been top 10 in ISOs every healthy year for the last like seven years. All right. Like, it's and then it's, you can't really say nothing about right. that. Like you, you go and Google it. It's like, yeah, he right. Well, damn, he right. Yeah, he right. <laughs> yeah. I like, I like, I really enjoyed you in Dallas. Yeah. And people don't understand playing in the Eastern conference and playing in the Western conference. Oh, What's yeah. the difference? It, it, more possessions, Western conference. The pace is, it's the pace is way more faster. Mm -hmm. Everything is bang, bang, bang. I'm telling you cross half court. You got to, First pick and roll, second pick and roll, shot got to go up. Go. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you've every, you got a lot of places, uh, you know, the, the LA's and a lot of places where people want to play. Mm -hmm. People go there and play, you know, so the competition is always, feel me? I'm talking about, I'm in the West. And Sacramento was trash, but they give you a run for your money. Yeah. So like to do what he's done, you know, play for these different teams, play for the East and come back and like deliver in the West. Mm -hmm. Them boys was, like when y'all played Phoenix, Y'all knew y'all was gonna win, huh? Oh yeah. I I, I seen it. Oh yeah. Y'all was playing like y'all yeah. whatever y'all wanted to get to, y'all got to. Yeah. Yeah. That shit, that shit was fun. And bro, I love Dallas. And look, and then he left Dallas and Dallas, you know what I'm saying? I'm I, you know, he ain't gonna say that. I'm gonna say it though. You what happened? Me? I'm they got real different. Yeah. They won as good. Yeah, they thought that they were gonna make that trade and it was gonna be like to the No, league. they gotta understand with Spence, he comes with a, a a a type of game that he can play on the ball and off the ball. And his size matters. I don't give a fuck. Like six four and up, your size matters defensively. And mm -hmm. you can shoot the three. So on the Dallas team, he was able to like, okay, cool, Luca, do your thing. I right, Luca out, my turn now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, but he still has size though. So you can like finish games with him. You don't have to worry about a motherfucker posting them up. You don't have to worry about somebody getting offensive rebounds on him. Cause you know, he got the size. So like, you know, real I, hoopers know. I yeah. say that, like, Dallas, Dallas was dope, man. I loved it. Um, as you said, Western Conference is an animal. Animal. You know what I'm saying? It's, a, it's, a, it's an animal. But I think the thing that was fun about Dallas was we all knew what we needed to do. And so you, you've you been on teams where it's like shit's up in the air. Right. You're like, today, should I Shoot, score? Should I, should I, should I, should I right. Like, who, what are we doing? Like, Everybody knew who are we role. featuring? Bruh, 
clockwork. J. Kidd. Clockwork. Love and that, that J. That's Kidd. clockwork. And then, I mean, that's clockwork. Uh, that's, that's the coaching staff. But yeah. yeah. And, and, and then, like he said, okay, we know Luca playing 35, right? I'm going to play 25 with him, probably 23, 25 with him. And I'm going to have another, like, 13 without him. Mm. Oh, to listen, it. we know how it is. Luca going to do his thing. Okay, hey, cool. I'm here. I'm here. All right, maybe cut, maybe not, but probably I'm just here. And then Luca going to give you a look like I'm tired. Oh, it's on. Yeah. It's on. Hey. And you got to go to hey. it. You know it's you on. Go. Yeah, yeah. Let's go. And then yeah. you off the court. Hey, it's on. I was hooping. You know what I'm saying? But it was just, it was clock working. But the other thing too is, especially in the number two position, the people who really make the number two like flow well is three through 15 wow. because Doe knew what to do. Bullock knew what to do. And we played the elephant game all the time. So Bullock would be running up the court and let's say Pat Bev on me and they like, yeah, he going to pick up 94, nine, nine. We going to get, uh, I don't know who's a bad defender, um, <laughs> but we just going to get the elephant, right? right? Bullock would spin the block at half court, come, you know what I'm saying? Get Pat Bev Back off screen. me. Boom. Boom. All right. Now I got the elephant. If he backing up, I can attack him with speed. He come up, whatever. Like, we all playing. Everybody knows. And so it's just, I'm not having to like, ah, right, 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 you right, over there. Right. Wait, uh, it's 16 on the clock. No, no, no. Wait, you go over there. Uh, and people, it's, yeah. yeah, it's like when you doing that, especially with a new team, bro, then you're working against the clock. The first pick and roll at 14. By the time you throw it back, it's Iso. seven. Yeah, oh, cool. well, now we just Has shot. Has he pulled, yeah. Has he pulled, we'll right? Whereas like when Bullock sets that at 22, Two I already got, I already yeah. got the, yeah, I already got the, the, the bad guy on me at twenty two twenty. I'm either breaking him down or if I do call a pick, I'm in the paint at sixteen. If I have a shot, cool, live, whatever, throwback. He catching at fourteen. He got second side pick, pick and roll. Well, that's the thing. People don't. It's bang bang. Right. It's, you know what I'm saying? It, yeah. And and it's not. I have to tell everybody this. At the, no, no, no. The guys that need to be in the corner are in the corner. So we got flat space in there. Like and it just happens. Fast. It's not as much directing and thinking and talking and and getting guys where it's they coaching. need to go all the time. Coaching. Shout out, Jake. Yeah, Kidd. like shout out, Jake Kidd for sure. Because are you always diagnosing who the worst defender on the court is, or are all there certain the guys oh, on the scout? Make, make, make a play. Make a play. Make a play. He's got a guard. Yeah, he's got a guard. Before the game even starts, he's got a guard. Hold on. Red dot. Who the red dot out there? He got a guard. Really? Hell yeah. Because why? Why would I listen? It's not that. Look, everybody believes they can score on everybody. So do I believe I can get a bucket on Pat Beth? Of course, of course. but. Why would I go against him if I can go against you this here. guy? Yeah, <laughs> like, let's go. We Wait a second, I'm here. laterally quick. I don't know who you're fucking talking about. You understand about. how much energy I'm just going to save? Like, I might be 4 for 14 with 16 points here, and I'm tired. Mm -hmm. and I might be 7 for 9 <laughs> with the same, you like, 16, be, 18, right. but I'm chilling. Chilling. And I got five assists because I was just in the lane. Right. Big came all right. How much more fun is it to play against someone who's a bad defender? Well, it's, fun, it's fun. I don't even it, score, and it's fun for me. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's like the, the fun goes both ways, right? Like you want, like a lot of times in those moments, you do want to go against the other guy because you want to like show, like I can do this. But all game long, you're trying to win the game. Oh, God. So bring the bring the guy here, break their defense first, and then I can get into the dick measuring contest later. Mm. Love that. Mm. Um, it's the truth. That's how the NBA goes too. So you've you've gone from team to team through your career is there a way that you avoid getting attached when you're in a city you want to know what's funny i actually have probably done a decent ish job of that up until dallas you were having a good but time? I, I think i think that had more to do with uh uh my family had kind of settled Mm. differently wow. than um, any other place. And I think, you know, with, with Brooklyn, like, we were always kind of kind of like uh, changing and fluctuating, right? Like first we were bad, you know what I'm saying? Then we traded for, for D'Lo. Then we were like kind of trying to be good. And we were young, but we were growing. But it was like, oh, you're still young. Pesky playoff You know what I'm saying? Now. Pesky. Yeah. Right. Then it was like, oh, the max players. But then you know, if you got max players, they can say that you're trading anytime. So it's like, you know, as much as it, it was home, right? And it is in terms of my basketball NBA career and I've grown so much here. Like you did have a little bit of fluidity there where you were like, okay, something could happen. Hmm. Um, but I, even though I was rooted, but then when I got to Dallas after like the DC experience, um, my family was like, oh, we, we want to stay. But, uh, and then it was like, damn, huh. we got to go. Yeah. What did you do? Did you, do you like kind of set up roots and, and say, Hey, we're, we'll be back in Dallas or did you just keep it transient? Uh, 
Well, I mean, I'm from LA, so I have a house out there. Mm. So basically everybody went went to to the real crib, like in LA. But but there was there was definitely like a, I thought I thought for a second I was I was gonna buy a house in Dallas. It's right. interesting because at some point you do plant roots. Like you have a home in oh, in sorry, the, sorry, sorry. I was all good. This is live girl. live in person. Hey baby, I'm doing a pod, baby. I love it. I gotta call you, baby. You give me a trust. I got a good guest on too, Spencer Denwood. I love you, baby. <laughs> Love hey man, gotta wife. do what you gotta do. Uh, listen, <laughs> happy, happy, what they say. Happy, happy wife, wife, happy, happy life, life. motherfucker. Yeah, 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 yeah babe, I hit you back. <laughs> hey, funny. no, let's talk about this though. For people to understand this, um, thank you. They try to count you out. They try to. Yeah. Some people it, talk to some people around the league on Smith's deal, he's gonna be out the league. Yeah. How does it feel, right, to like, like, because we're human at the end of the day. Yeah. To hear that, to like, damn, like, y'all really, yeah, that's how y'all really feel about yeah. me? I like, yeah. how does that feel to go there, then go to Dallas and do like do what you fucking did? Yeah. Like, oh, I mean, the, the DC experience uh kind of burned me in a different way just because you gotta remember, like, I got written off after our first like 20, 30 games. I had a couple of 30 point games in the, that time span, but I didn't even have to play. Like when they signed me to the three-year deal, they was like, you could take the first year off. Cause I was coming back from ACL. Yeah, ACL, right. And I was like, nah, like y'all said. You know, Brad want to win. You said we got the, the the talent from the from the Lakers, and like we trying to make this thing happen. I was like, like I'll go out there and do whatever you need. Like, like let's let's figure it out. Like let's really figure it out. So, I, and I think we started like eight and yeah. eight and two or something. So we yeah. had a nice little start. Obviously, guys on contract are trying to also establish themselves. And so it was a it was a fluid situation. So when it got pinned on me, and I was like, wait, hold on, I didn't even have to be playing right now. You know what I'm saying? Mm. That was why it kind of kind of burned me in a sense of not like- to blame somebody. Yeah, you well, you they know how I go to They ain't blaming you Brad. Yeah. They is not blaming Brad. So, but, 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 the, but the fucked up part though about it <laughs> shout was- Shout out to Bradley Bill. Yeah, no, shout out to Brad. And, and Brad, I'll tell you this, like the fucked up part about it was, you know what I'm saying? People started to try to say like, I was like, oh, it's my team, it's this and a third. And, and like all these like uh, behind the scenes, like media reports started coming out from people, quote unquote, in the locker room, et cetera, et cetera. Mm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So now I'm getting hot because listen, I signed for good money. Ain't no way in hell I thought I was coming to take this team from the super max guy who I had talked I to before I signed. I didn't there, think, yeah. fuck that. I don't even act I like didn't that. think, I was shocked about the contract because I'm like, there's no way he's playing this year. That was my thought. Like, no, oh, Spence gonna come back middle of the year. Okay, cool, they should be halfway decent, maybe, you yeah, know, yeah. play in team. I didn't, the motherfucker, they say, they say Pat, no, he's starting the season. How? If I just came yeah. from ACL. Five and a half months. God. Five and a half months. And, and I, as I'm playing into it and figuring it out, and remember, like I said, when I signed, I signed on to be Brad's number two. I didn't sign on to take the team. Right, so when right. people saying this shit behind the scenes, I'm like, bro, he's on a super max. Right. Like I got good money, but super ma super yeah. max dudes make sixty million yeah. a year. Yeah. Like, come on, man. And they like, doing whatever the fuck they want. Yeah, to. I'm making a yeah. third of that. Like, yeah. dog. I, like, I'm not like. There's a lot of things I am stupid. Is not nah, it's not yeah. Like, come you got on. good sense. Yeah, good like, sense. and I've been around the league for a minute. <laughs> I've already been in a situation where we did have Max West, Kyrie, KD, etc. Like, there's a pecking order for sure. Like, it is what it is. How much you get paid matters. Like, no. I'm not dumb. So when all these things are coming out, you know, what I'm saying behind the scenes and getting pinned, and I'm sitting here like, like basically, like, oh, you motherfuckers. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, I'm sitting there like this, yeah. Like, oh, okay. Yeah, okay. This, 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 what, this what type of time it is. Yeah. And, and basically in that situation. And you don't know, before he keeps going, that'll fuck up your, like, whatever reputation you have. Oh, you'll be cooked. And if you don't have a re rep reputation, th that's the one they pin on you. Yes. So what a do person, you mean reputation in, in like, the, so like the locker room so or no, no, in so, the city? So how we start this conversation about, uh, you know, why people don't respect them, right? Mm -hmm. That part right there, you do something, I don't know, that someone doesn't like or doesn't approve of, that blame gets pinned on you so easy. Yeah. And now the whole mm. world thinks that's really who you are. For sure. Mm. Every NBA team thinks that's really who you are. Sure. Resbrook told me I don't play defense. Every motherfucker in the league, I'm talking about, it was crazy. Motherfucker was just going at me left and right. I'm, damn, what the fuck going on? <laughs> but Because it becomes a narrative. Yeah, because Perception a, comes a, reality. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah, to his point, like, yeah, that's exactly how it is. And so, and so like, you know, at the time, you know, I'm I'm hot, I'm pissed. Like I'm and I'm starting to figure out who it is talking, people talking shit. Right. So, but my agent's like, you gotta kill it. Because if you fire back now, only playing okay, you might be out the league for right. real. He's like, all you can do is go to Dallas and be who you say you are. That's really what that's that in a mm -hmm. nutshell is exactly what happened. And so that's why when it all went down, I was quiet. And I just went to Dallas. And you see from a healing standpoint. 
the year he played in Dallas, the year, year he posed to come back from injury and yeah. play his best year he ever played. <laughs> and I told you, it was, and it was so easy to play like, for J. Kidd because uh, yeah. he told the whole locker room, we get a ball to Luka, we get a ball to uh, JB, we get a ball to Spence. And then the next year was we get a ball to Luka, we get a ball to Spence, we get a ball to Seawood. Period. This is what we do. The rest of y'all do what you do. You rebound, you rebound, you play defense, you play defense. You know the offense, boom, boom, boom. You play, play, play. And it, and it just. It takes off three months of, yeah. of like a basketball. Yeah. It just simplifies. Yeah. Huh. Rolls. Easy. What? Rolls, rolls make a team. Look, the reason why that team was really good, because if you look at the roster, okay, you got Luka, who's all world. The next two people you could say are possibly borderline, maybe all-star, but maybe not, like whatever, me and JB. The rest of the guys, you can argue you may or may not want on your team, team. for real. Yeah. You know what wow. I'm saying? Now, in my opinion, I know who they are, and I know their character, and I know how they, how they are in the locker room, how they play, and how they produce. And I'll roll with them dogs 10 days out of 10. But from a general but from manager's- a, But like from a GM yeah. and fan standpoint, yeah. you're it's probably not beating your... down the door yeah. for those guys. But like, what happens is, when they all know their roles, the vibe is immaculate. You got guys that have talent that you just don't even really understand. Like Maxi Kleber is honestly one of the best role players in the entire mm -hmm. NBA. Just mm -hmm. from a teammate, like he'll go block as many shots as you want. He'll go take as many charges as you want. He will guard one through five. Get dunked on. And he'll get dunked care. on. Don't, don't care. care. Don't no, care. That's, that's a skill. Don't care. That's a skill. That's a skill. Some, don't, some bigs. Don't drop. They, they get dunked on once. They not jumping the rest of the game. They the rest of the, the, the season. Week. Yeah, they may not jump the rest of the week. For real, bro. Like, nah, That's a real thing. Maxie will get dunked on five times. Take in the that game. bitch right out. Boom. Don't shoot a three Let's next shoot. time. Doesn't care. And and <laughs> here's the crazy part: if he misses shots that day, he'd be like, Spence, I want you to shoot. I'm just gonna rebound. Like, bro, like some Ed Davis. Like, like there's there every so often you get vets and guys that are really just like. Locked in and, and, and the Doe's and the Bullocks and the Maxi Clavers and the Dwight Powell's of the world, that's who they are. And so when you put that mix with three dudes who can boogie and you got a coach that says, go boogie. Good team. Sometimes Good I think team. that that's even a more effective way of building a roster than being like, let me see how many all-stars I can jam onto the team yeah. as possible. Mm. Because you're one of the first people that I've heard talk about that pecking order of the NBA. Yeah. And I think... And you you would both know better than I, but I imagine that there's sometimes that guys don't want to accept their order in everything, especially oh, if there's sure. a bunch of all stars. Have you experienced a, that? A, a ton, of course. Yeah, I play with Dwight Howard, James Harden. <laughs> yeah, then I'm telling you, this is James Harden pre MVP James Harden. So this is James Harden. He give motherfuckers 40, 20s, and 20s. Yeah. like some wild shit, like yeah. video, like video game shit. Yeah. Dwight get mad, get that bitch off rebound. I, I'm on the outlet. James on the outlet. He look at both eyes, push that bitch up the court. Ooh. We watch on film. Dwight, James open. He man, next play. We but he open. next play. I'm open on the post slot. I don't get it. Ah, damn. <sighs> Feel me? But if we was just a little bit more together, mm. who the fuck would stop Dwight Howard in his prime and James Harden in his prime? Facts. Like you know what I'm That's saying? Kobe and Shaq. Yeah, we lost first round to the fucking Portland Trailblazers because of the lack of identity, not that, not the, or like the you don't understand what that order is. Or you the don't best understand way to what the order is, and yeah. that's where coaching comes in. Yeah. Right, because it's a, like players are meant to play. And when you get players trying to beat coaches and players, that's when the team goes like this. Because mm. now the player thinks, "Oh man, no, 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 no." When you get players who are there to play, like the guys he named, are are not trying to beat coaches, aren't trying to reinvent the wheel. Uh, duh, 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 duh. We're here to hoop. You get players like that who are willing to hoop and let coaches coach. It's a, it, you got a really good team. Yeah. When okay. we're trying to mix it, it's kind of hard. And you gotta remember, like, think about how much talent really in the league. Like, we we the top five hundred, like, in the world, like. Like everybody has a talent, can really play at a high level. You just got to put them in that position to succeed. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Interesting. So what's your relationship right now with Kyle Kuzma? Uh, <laughs> what happened? <laughs> what happened to <laughs> What, bro? You're uh, not in the news. Uh, channel, not, you know, I'm, I'm asleep. Oh, uh, nah. Um, <laughs> no, what happened with Kuz first? Before we, no, 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 they, had my back, they had a back and forth. Uh, uh, they had they had a little shit? bit of a, yeah, oh, yeah, okay. yeah, 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 it was just yeah, some, yeah. some hoop and yeah. shit. But it was uh that was where the conversation about pecking orders kind of came into play. Yeah, I, I mean, all right. So I, I would say if I wasn't on another Hoopers podcast, I probably wouldn't even address it, given that's a year old. Um, but you you know how it goes in locker room. Certain things happen. You feel me? And like I kind of alluded to, like at the time, my agent said like I I couldn't say nothing. And so it got to a place where I was I was tired of hearing about it. Mm. And so I, I said my honest feelings and mm. I don't walk back anything that I said, but that's just kind of what it is. But that, that I mean, I've said it publicly like probably twice now. So 
Yeah. This is what it is. So it's smoke. Every time y'all see each other, it's smoke. Yeah, I'm love I'm that. Love, love that for the game. He loves smoke. Love it, that. It's funny though because like I'm a guy that really don't have no no uh people that I have like real beef with mm -hmm. like or anything like that. But yeah, nah, you he, he not my friend though. I love that. <laughs> love that. It's happy though. You don't yeah. have to be like I yeah. pretending to be friends with everybody yeah. is like a fake way to go yeah. through life. Yeah, I, nah. I, yeah, but no, nah, we gotta give a shout out. And I gotta get this shout out personally. The guard whisper. <laughs> Straight up. See, a lot of people, if you ain't in Cali, you, now don't you know. gotta put me in. I'm about to. I'm about to real quick. So <clears throat> it's a group of guards that's out there. Uh it's him, it's Shay, it's Shay's cousin. The Q. Kill. Mm -hmm. uh, it's two more people. Cause sometimes cares. Care cares out there also. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. I'm Peyton, missing one more. Peyton Pritchard be out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And these guys, I'm talking about the and we talk about trainers and we talk about all this, right? Of course. And he has a a, a small group. I mean, it's getting bigger now. Yeah. But like three, four years ago, it's a very small group that he had, maybe four or five guards. Every year they got better. Yeah. Every year they got better. Spence got better. Shea got better. Uh, Nikhil got better. Uh, Shea going crazy. Crazy. Like, crazy. so like, I definitely got to get in. I don't even know his name. I just know his Instagram. What's I, his name? I, yeah. His name's Olin. He's my uncle. Right what? Hey, my uncle. What? <laughs> it's like, crazy, like, crazy. Like, 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 dad's brother, mom, sister, uncle. Basically, yeah. That's what fine. I like, didn't even know. I just yeah. knew guard whisper. Yeah, I said, I say, man, that's that's real life family. Like he had to cook out, had to crib all that. That's hard. Yeah. No, no, no. He's straight up. I'm talking about. He let me. I come in there. I wanted to shoot. He always all all for the work. You know, I'm in my own little zone. Elite, elite trainer. Yeah. Elite but trainer. We do see a lot of you in the off season, a lot of workouts, a lot of even we have videos of like strength training that you do. Mm -hmm. If you were going to give advice to a young hooper about what they could do strength training wise to best prepare their body for a long basketball career, what advice would you give them? Fuck. Uh, I mean... From what I know of strength training now, like, and everybody body being different for me, like mobility and uh, mm -hmm. like owning my end ranges, you know what I'm saying? And, and getting in shape, I think mobility and in shape, and that doesn't just mean yoga. I mean, like with lifting and stuff, Mike G has really stressed that, which helped me come back from my ACL as fast as I did. And then also um, my theory about, and you can correct me if I'm wrong because you actually played with him, but my theory about like why LeBron never gets hurt is because he's never redlining. So his capacity is so high, right? Like he may do athletic plays that look like it's on a scale of one to 10, it's a 12. But if he could really do a 15, when well, he's not redlining. But if you always at that point of exhaustion, if you always like jumping your max height and all this stuff over 82, I feel like you just, you get hurt. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If, if you find a way to like be in such great shape, and I mean, shoot, look at the, a lot of greats. Kobe talked about it, being in shape, things like that. Like you have a certain like threshold that you can sustain that's like, higher than the next guy. And then you you also just don't break the same way like other people do. Like, mm. think about it. You, you picking up 94 every day. Yeah. Quad's got to be, Quad's got to be yeah, ready. And, and, it, and, and, and you in such great shape that like, a dude's like, man, he here again? Oh God. Like, wow. like, damn G, like, I you ain't that, tired? Yeah, I wonder did that come from, um because because you got hurt. Because I know mine picked up when I had Mike, when I got my micro fraction, I had to, time I'm out the whole year. I'm, what the fuck? I ain't never been out a whole year. Like, right. And that shit made me go right into like, okay, maybe I thought I knew what the fuck I was doing, but like, let me let me go ahead and fix some shit. And that's how I got on my body shit so tough. So yeah, that that shit you get hurt. Oh, it <laughs> changed shit, Oh yeah, that shit changed your life. Yeah. So the answer that, yeah, young players is basketball. Y'all go get hurt. You know, hopefully y'all don't. Hopefully y'all don't. Knock on wood. Hopefully y'all don't. But the, you know, the way the numbers are set up, you play long enough, you uh, injury is bound to happen. And, and it, so it seems like it's like a that's what inflection point yeah. where it could either break you yeah. or you could become strong. That's where the educational part comes. Because yeah. when you get hurt, you start learning and shit about your body. Oh, my, my quad isn't firing like my left quad. Okay, cool. So anything off my right leg, I might, okay, I might fire from another spot. Let me, okay, cool. We got to work. I'm I'm thinking it's here, but it's really here. Glue, yeah. you know? So like you start to learn a little bit more about your body. Yeah, you start yeah. listening to PTs differently too. God. Like everything they talking about, you're trying to absorb that knowledge versus just be like, all right, just 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 get my quad right. So I right. just poop. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, nah, like, why why did it not fire for real? Like, what what's going on? How, what's the what's the workout guy you uh you, you train with? 
Mike G? He cold. Oh, yeah. He nice. He cold. He nice. Well, what, what I feel, do you I feel see like in, I got the best two in the business. Yeah, yeah, he cold. Yeah, he cold. What yeah. do you see about his workouts where you're like, that? damn, that's a nice addition? He, he, pre he preaches mobility. Yeah. yeah. And, and no matter what, no matter how high you jump, what muscles you have, if you can't go here to here, I don't fuck what you do. For that sure. shit you do it ain't gonna last. That shit gonna For last sure. 10 games. If I you feel can't like I see stretch here, you can't push your shit and hold it there. Yeah. You feel me? Knee uh, uh knee over ankle, hold yeah. it there. You feel me? You on the ground, you can't get in quad positions and, and frog positions and just hold it there while doing core, while stabilizing this. You can't right. do that shit, you go play 20 games. Man. Yeah, I feel like I see right. videos of you like uh doing like a mobility routine with the 45, looking like Bruce Leroy, like going through. <laughs> no like shoes, no socks. Hey, that's, shit like that's, that. that's, God. Him, that's how you got to do it. You got to yeah. do it like in your, in your bare feet. And like, it's really like, a vibe though. Yeah. It really I'm is. Fun. Yeah, it does. It, fun. it looks like, it's like, I want to get on my shit. I also see, uh, if, if we're rattling through videos, I see, I saw an unfortunate video of a, a trip you took to China of a, of a young man, uh, you know, doing some some crazy moves. I think maybe he put <laughs> a ball. Happened? What happened? What I think he maybe put a ball between his legs or something like that. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. In front so, of like so one billion people. <laughs> so check it. So check it. Like we we out there. We playing one on one, right? And you know how it is. One's like you either playing from a spot, three dribbles. Like oh, okay, okay. So y'all ones, okay, bro. So look. <laughs> he hey, start, they clever too. Hey, they grabbed it like, too. They got that. team dribble moves, and I'm like, bro, like I'm not chasing this dude. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm not chasing this guy. Like, like we in the park. You know what I'm saying? At night, and they want me to really go guard. And I'm like, bro, I'm not chasing this guy. You know what I'm saying? So we get down to game point. Where I'm like, all right, cool, whatever, boom, boom. And then he doing his little shit, and then tossed through my legs and shot it and made it. Ooh. I was sitting there like, oh hell. I know it's gonna get like to the, the states. Yeah. I know it's it gonna was... get to the states and look crazy. Like, That's how I be though. Yeah. Because the whole crowd went insane. Oh yeah, they, like, went, they went nuts. So, yeah. like, so basically, <laughs> so basically yeah, then the next day we had to play all them dudes again. And I straight up, obviously, this didn't make the clips of shit. Of course I ran, not. I ran through all them. Yeah. Because then it was like, now, now it's personal. Right. Like, I'm hearing my boys call me like, yo, what happened? I'm like, bro, it's not real ones. Like, they dribbling 18, <laughs> 18 times. Like, you all can't the do stuff that. you see on like YouTube videos, though. Bro, like, all that. Bop, 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 like, bop, bop, bop. <laughs> <laughs> he was kind of quick. So I'm like, bro, like, I'm not even like really out here for this. Like, I'm not doing this. You know what I mean? But. Yeah, then it, then it got serious because then I was mad. Yeah. Like, I was, yeah. I was, like, I was okay. like, actually, I got to get my leg back. Yeah, yeah I got to get I'm cooking back. shit now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that would. So I, I started mean, posting things, like, right. all types of type stuff. Yeah. Like, I was it cooking crazy like, shit. Oh, yeah, I was done. None of that shit get out. Yeah, no, yeah, it was, it was, yeah, it was yeah, the one bucket. That's you turn into like the mascot playing against the little kids in football, just Pretty like much. stiff arm. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah, all that. Like, I I turned to real, like, like post work, step back, fades. I'm like, okay, like, like, because now if y'all going to put me on, on, Shit, bar stool or something. Right. We didn't post it. Dude. Yeah, we right. didn't, didn't well, that's how I go. That's how I go. Now, all y'all going to understand that, like, no offense, but like five, eight, 135 pounds ain't making the league. No, ain't not doing it. Like, not making nah. the league. Yeah. No, sir. It'd that be must hard, have been the hard. best moment of that dude's life. Probably, the, probably the, so. the way that, like, the, the fact that he made the shot after that is like For a, sure he's a pure so stroke of luck. Yeah, he, I actually kind of kinda laughed it off at first because I, I was telling him, I was like, guys, I'm not going to chase him. So I was like, ha, ah, all right, whatever, blah, blah, blah. So I laugh it off. You dapped him up in the video like immediately. Yeah, it was cool. But then it was when everybody was flaming me back here. Oh, and I was hurts. like, that hurts. Oh, that's how I go. Y'all posted this for real. <laughs> yeah. Like, and look, and you right. know, you ain't that type anyway. So you, I know you over there looking like, damn, that's what y'all think of. Yes, right. I'm over here like, <laughs> over here like <laughs> wait, hold on. Y'all really think this dude, like, <laughs> hey, all right, fine. Uh, fine. Goodbye. Now we're going to show all that. You put goodbye. out your, your like own highlight tape of you. <laughs> I, <laughs> hey, I really, I really should have. Hey, we really should have, dude. Just Man. like taking him to the woodshed. Brooklyn Nets, Brooklyn Nets. But yo, but what? How about this with his contract? He gets. He has all the normal escalators of you know make the playoffs, win first round, win second right. round escalators. But then he said for the finals, if I win the finals. <laughs> One dollar, dude. One dollar in the contract. Oh, he has just a single dollar. How you know this? <laughs> no, no, that's GM you that's a Jason Lushan thing, bro. That was I. I didn't. I didn't do that. It was. I thought it was crypto. So that was. Oh, that that's was the, that was the deal before that. Oh, okay, 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 okay. But uh, nah. I, shout out, Jason. I mean, really, what it came down to was in the deal parameters. He tried to get as much of it to the front as possible. So I guess I had to get something for the finals if I was going to get something for like. 
conference finals and whatever. All right. So he said, like, I made as low as possible. Y'all ain't gonna win no championship, so ba- y'all go ba- for first. Ba- ba- the, not, right. the not fun, <laughs> hey, right. the not fun answer right. is that like, he was doing a good <laughs> right. agent yeah, job, but agent he deal. took it like, yeah. like it was a real I joke. That. No, I thought it was like the own the the joy of winning a championship is its own payment. I thought that was like the Hell angle no. of it. No, no. <laughs> if they would have gave me fifty million for winning it, I'd have put it on there. But I thought it was like, no, I care about right. yeah, winning no. the championship. Great agent. Give me no, great agent. No. It was, it was, great it was agent. phenomenal. Shout out Jason Glushan. All y'all young boys signed with him. Love that. Yeah. Great guy. Shout out Jason. Man. Love hey, that. Hey, Mike Love G, that. Jason Glushan, um, Olin Simplis, aka the Guard Whisperer, all my guys. I could vouch database. guard was with y'all and yeah. the movement guy. I vouch yeah. for both of them. There you go. But um, nah, that's that's really all it was. And, and even when um, he orchestrated it, he said, Spence, I mean, obviously you have your whatever agent fee, but I was like, if you do win the championship, I want that dollar too. And I was like, bro, like obviously you can have it. Like, yeah, that's, that's fire. They yeah. said you're gonna yeah. frame it like uh, yeah. Mr. Kraft. No, nah, that's what he wanted. <laughs> he, straight hard. up, he referenced Mr. Kraft. He said, I want you to frame it and sign it. He that's like, hard. I want that dollar. Yeah, that's hard. So that, when we was in Dallas, like for a time period, we thought like, hey, you might be getting a dollar. Big Y'all guy. should be top four seed this year. Yeah. Brooklyn Nets. Top four seed in the East? East. I think so. So you got Celtics. Right. Gotta go. You got MVP. C- Celtics, Sixers. Then who who else you Milwaukee? put at the top Milwaukee. there? Oh, yeah, so free. Oh, oh, yeah. Can't, can't forget, forget them. No, 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 no. But then hey, after hey, the three listen, of those. Forget, hey, Giannis, we did not forget you. No, no, I said it. I said it too, Giannis. I ain't going to lie. I, 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 I didn't forget you. He no duck smoke. <laughs> no, I don't duck smoke, Pat. No duck smoke. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah. um, and, and Brooklyn, for sure. Yeah, Brooklyn right there. <clears throat> Interesting. Because they got a lot. Yeah. And they got a lot. Like, they underrated in size, too. A lot Maybe of people keep forgetting about that. You know, so you can switch a ton of shit. And there's uh, upward mobility in, in some of the the players. On like you, you could see how a guy na- like Macau Bridges could get mm, better yeah. this year and yeah. kind of uh, round into form. No, USA USA helped him. Well, I had a conversation today, right? Good friend of mine who does not play basketball, right? And I like to have conversation. No, no, no. My friend named Mike Wallace. Okay. Fair. And I, I like to have conversations with people who don't play basketball because like different perspectives. Yeah, but mm. if you're talking about the right things, they're going to give you like the absolute like truth. So. My theory was you don't need two superstars to win a championship. You have one superstar and one really good motherfucker. Yeah. Really good motherfucker. And I think they got a, a type. You look at the Denver Nuggets. Yeah. You know, obviously Jokic. Yeah. He's a motherfucker. But around him, obviously Murray's good. So Aaron we're not Gordon's calling him a superstar, but he's a good motherfucker. You, you, I'm well, t- because real- su- superstars stand alone. Right. You're not probably putting, and this is again, Shout out Jamal Murray. He played phenomenal. He came back from ACL. ACL brother. Real shit. Great. But um, I don't think anybody's necessarily putting Jamal Murray on, let's call it Charlotte. Right. And expecting him to immediately be a finals contender. Right. Whereas like Giannis, Yo, you bitch. put him on Charlotte and they're now immediately- we, we put you here for a in reason. In the playoffs. Yeah, we put, like, yeah, yeah. We put you here to win. You know what I'm saying? Those superstar yeah. players. So like the argument was, you know, do you need- two superstars to win. And if I had to think on it, and because I, you know, <clears throat> I done had James, and I done had Dwight, and I done had Kawhi, and I done had Paul George, and I done had a team, we started two rookies too, and the vibe was just different. Yeah. You know, maybe the regular season may, might've been tough, because we didn't have two superstars to lean on, but when you get to the playoffs, it was way more of an easier game. Shit, you only have double team one motherfucker. Like, we know where the double team come from, y'all double teaming this motherfucker, you know, so like, What's your what's your what's your thought on that? You think you need two superstars to win or well I agree. I think I think I, I lean back to my dad's experience. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, do we only have one? Like you wouldn't call JB and, and I know nobody's calling me a superstar. And that was two and three mm. right there. And like we were a game two away from really giving the Warriors a series because we was up like 15 in game yeah. two and collapsed. You know what I'm saying? And after that, you know what I'm saying? You're down 2-0, ah shit, champions, blah, blah. But like that is Again, if the if the coaching is right and the roles are there and and the and the group mentality is connected, oh, you you definitely I don't, I don't think you do. So but do you but, th- but that guy's got to be that guy. Though. That guy has to be like yeah, the like, guy. Like who Luka do you think the Giannis- the last team to have two superstars? Is it the Laker the Lakers with AD and LeBron, or is it like you going no, back no, to no, Steph no. with Steph K- you had, you KD? Had, uh, Steph KD, you had a uh, you had LeBron and and Wade like you. But I, so I'm saying most recent would be the uh, AD and LeBron in the bubble with two two superstars. Oh, shit. Agree or disagree? He about to say something. 
He, he his face changed. Oh. I am. Not it's your podcast, bro. They're, they're giving you a lot of money to, to to say what's on your mind. Okay, who's this? So both of them are superstars that year. I mean, you're this guy. AD is winning all NBA, but it seems like your your argument is that he's not a superstar. My argument is where the championship took place. That's my argument. That's my argument. That's my argument. I'm going to leave it right there. So, like, last time, yep, we're going to say AD, LeBron, got to give credit. They won the championship. They won it in the bubble. Right. So you're saying that that hasn't No, I'm just saying they won it in the bubble. I got to give them a question where they won it at. But the last thing to do Now your face, Shane. <laughs> oh, but the last, listen, but the last listen, thing listen. to do that before... I was in the bubble. I was watching. But the I last, was watching it right, But the last thing to do that before was... Uh, LeBron was... You feel me? Like, this, this, it was LeBron. Well, what about LeBron Kyrie? It was LeBron. I mean, so, but it, it, it was Kyrie. It was... 55 LeBron, 45 Kyrie type shit. That seems like two superstars to me. Yeah, if, yeah. I, well, I think, again, right, in, in, in Pat Bev's defense, right, and I think the, the difference in how a lot of normal people define superstar and how players in the NBA define superstar are two totally different right. things. And that's why mm. the fans say there's like 40 superstars. And no. we say there's like five. Five. Because, because to us, <laughs> straight to us, up, a superstar is I'm here, we win. Right. Mm. So if you define it as that, who would you say is a superstar? Jokic. Superstar. Okay. Giannis. Okay. Superstar. Embiid. Superstar. LeBron James. Well, LeBron, obviously, I, I, we don't know because it's your okay. 20, but yeah. in general, yeah. yes. In general, Ste uh, yeah. Steph. Okay. KD. KD. And then, I mean, LeBron's there. And you got average so. you game, maybe Jason Tatum. But that's, but that's on a, the that's brink. A maybe. That's, that's a maybe. maybe. We're talking about definite household. We're talking about I'm here, we win. And so St that's Luca? how we look at it. Luca? Superstar? Yeah. Yeah. So well, now we're past five. Okay, okay. But, we, but still, but, but we but, ain't at 40, though. We're not, at 40. <laughs> we're, we're, not, we're, not, we're not rolling through a list where we're like, oh, uh, they teamed yeah, up, yeah. blah, blah. You yeah, don't even yeah. have enough to really put on the same team at that point. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I really think, like, when guys are on podcasts, they're speaking out or whatever it is, understand it's not coming from like a hater perspective. It's coming from how we in the foxhole look at the game. God. So I, I could be like, you know what? Jalen Brown deserves his 300 million. He can cook anybody here. He can get 27, 30 points a game, whatever, whatever. And then the moment I say, oh, but he's not a superstar, then that's going to be what's clipped. That's going to be what's taken, right. taken over there. But it's like, you got to remember how we define superstar. It's mm -hmm. I he I'm here, we win. God. And so mm -hmm. it's a handful of dudes. Yeah. You know what yeah, I'm saying? And, and, and remember, and I'm not just talking about win that game. I'm talking about Kawhi. we're gonna win 50 plus games. Kawhi. Like yeah. we're gonna, if I'm healthy, we win 50 yeah. games. And we go into likely conference finals. Yeah. Like, like I'm bringing you here to change my organization to win yeah. the championship. Like, I'm not bringing you here so we go first round. Or not second. just butts in the seats. Yeah, nah. Like, like we could we could get a scrappy team to get to the first round. Right. I mean, shit, we did it with with a 20, like two year old D-Lo. You know what I'm saying? And and the next best players behind him was like a 19-year-old Jared Allen. I think I was like 23, 24 time, whatever it was. Like, you know what I'm saying? And, and we were scrappy and young and boom, boom. We weren't superstars. We put it together. We had great vibes. Obviously, again, we overachieved because the because the vibe was right. But it wasn't any one person there that was like, because I'm here, we're in the fucking finals. All right. And I think fans have a broader perspective of what a superstar is because of the existence of max contracts. And Kawhi. And yeah. Yeah, Kawhi. There you mm. go. We're we're not leaving Kawhi off, mm. but injuries have affected that. Yeah. But uh, yeah. but like when you have a certain number of max contracts, right. every team wants to have their guy yeah. be a superstar. And that's so the and that's the and that's yeah. the that's where fans kind of like, oh, he gets this money, he should. You know what I'm saying? Like, but that's right. where that comes. But from. then also, max sometimes is a is a misnomer because a lot of times everybody's max is different, and it's about the verbiage in the CBA. Like for example, my max extension is 130 million dollars. I can't get more than that. Mm. Like the CBA won't allow more than that. These, are, these have, are words and numbers. I don't understand what these mean. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just I'm saying. Not, like I'm not 40, max. 40%. <laughs> I've never been max. I'm saying like, you have all this stuff like years of service. Uh, it's it's 40% of this and, and your annual raise and blah, blah. Like, like even if, if I was to call myself a max player because I got my max extension, I still can't get as much money as Jalen Brown. All right. Like it's written into the CBA. I cannot do that. So I could get a max extension. They could release tomorrow. Spencer Denley signs max deal. Average fan, 
Oh, oh, what the hell? Do what Michael Jordan did. Right, right. Yeah. Right. It's not maxed by, you know what I'm saying? Oh, LeBron can get 500 million. No, I can't do that. Like, it would be my max. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, and that's what they get it confused at. You guys need to freaking learn this, NBA fans. You got to learn about us, us ballers. No, no, chill, chill. Um, chill, chill. You, <laughs> you've always talked about the steak and fruit diet. Yeah. So I, I need to hear your top five fruits and your top three steak places. Hold on, before you say this. Oh. I got a weird ass experience this this past weekend. What the hell? Weird as fuck. I, uh, <laughs> all right, keep put, put a pin in that. The, dude, the, the, and it's it's gonna carry on right to this okay, though. All right. So for some reason, I got like I was taking sea moss. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. they say sea moss does crazy things. Yeah, okay, cool. So I'm taking sea moss, and and the, and the person I'm taking sea moss, they 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 describe them, you know, what 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 you know different foods does to your body and how you only should be eating this and what horses eat and what, you know, blah, 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 eat. Why do you think? And that made me look at a lot of foods very, very different. Yeah. So what foods, what foods? Um, a lot of meats, a chickens for sure. Yeah. Like chicken, mono, put terrible mono, mono gosh, it, it, all that, what they pumping up with yeah. the chickens with and everything like that. Yeah. Obviously. Wait, uh, what did you say? What was the, the phrase you used? One, one stomach. They don't process food the same way. Like ruminant animals do. Yeah. Like I'll, ruminant I'll get, animals? I'll, I'll, get, I'll get in there. So that's why I wanted to put that out there yeah. so, to ease into his next. No, nah, that's fire. Yeah. yeah that's I'm fire. trying to learn all of that. And man, that I'm 35. So like, I, you know me, I'm man, give me chicken pasta before the game. Right. But yeah. Pat, you know, if you're, you know, if your your body and was a sink and you wouldn't put chicken and pasta in the sink and expect the water to come out as smooth as possible. The sink being your heart. So yeah. the water being your blood. So Damn. if you don't get to, that don't give that, it's coming out, but it might just take a it slow might chunk up a little bit. And it might, no, it might just take slow to get there, which means you're slowly thinking, you're slowly moving, you're slowly. But imagine if you didn't have that and you're just coming without any of that and just all that pump. Now you're, you think fast now, just imagine you think fast and then you heal quick now, just think, you know, so now I'm, Last couple of days, I've been in some shit like, man, fuck. What you eat does, it can affect everything. It can, yeah. I feel like I've had like pieces of fish and felt high before. Like I, like mercury, I feel it in mercury, my, mercury. in my brain. Yeah. No, no, I'm not saying like that. The, the, You're the saying it in a negative. No, way. I'm, I'm not saying that. I'm saying mercury. Like I really said oils, zinc and mercury. Like mercury right? <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Seriously. So, but so, so tell us about first. T tell us about your diet. What you were talking about with a single stomach? Because it seemed like you knew what the hell you were talking about. <laughs> and then, get, then give us a list. Then, then I need those lists. I mean, so as we talked about, when you get hurt, like you start deep diving on a bunch of shit. So you know what I'm saying training was one of it. One of them, one of the pieces, that's how I got to like, uh, you know, Mike G, things like that. And then obviously uh, one of the biggest pieces of health is what you put in your body, how you feel it. So, you know, in, in breaking down diets and looking at, you know, how best to eat for the most part. I mean, I tried to take it back to like, think about like a million years ago, mm. how we eat for real. It was probably picking berries and shit as we hunted. Mm. And then, you know what I'm saying? If we did get a kill, you know what I'm saying? We eat organs and all, right? Um, and we, we weren't having meat every day though, because... It was, a, it was a delicacy. It was you a ain't finding hunt. shit, hunting shit every day. Yeah. Who are you? What are you? Yeah. Right. You, know, you, every day, you ain't bro. nice like that. Every day. You get it every, every so often. Right. Like, you know what I'm saying? But, but you know what I'm saying? A lot, of, a lot of berries, things like that. Um, you know, and and try to go for low glycemic index fruits um, so they don't spike your blood sugar. Um, spikes in blood sugar and, and things like that are like one of the leading causes of aging in the human body. It's just talking about like cellular repair and stuff like that. So, you know, it's pretty much just that. I mean, in, in a nutshell. What are some examples of low glycemic index fruits? Blueberries. So Blueberries, you, you like those or you avoid those? No, by far my favorite. The, mm. Oh, you enjoy I those? Have, I have them all the time. Blueberries. All right, so give it. Give us the rest of the top five fruits. Blueberries, number one. Um, I mean, if I'm if I'm keeping it like super simple for people, I mean, like blackberries, like usually the the denser, the the coloring um, in the berry family, the better it is for you. You're saying the um, darker the berry, the sweeter the juice? Hey, no. <laughs> hey, no. Hey, no. That just sounds like um, what you're scientifically saying. Sure, sure, in, sure, in, term, sure. in, terms of, in terms of taste, I mean, and, and here's where I haven't um, gone to like the next step of like the hybrid fruits versus the completely natural ones. So I know some people are against strawberries, but I still eat them. Um, like Tom Brady's very anti strawberry, isn't yeah, he? Because yeah. of that inflammatory, yeah. uh, inflammatory response. And like I said, like hybrid foods, then you can get into like the, the Dr. Savvy school of thinking in terms of like, what's uh electric and what's hybrid and things like that. And so there there's still another level for me to go to for sure. Um but sea moss is definitely uh uh part of my diet. Um how, I mean, how often do you take sea moss? 
pretty often. I mean, it's it's in in most of my smoothies. And, so it once a day. Yeah. Love that. So yeah. I'm trying to change my shit. We talked about the good job, Mike Wallace. And then also <laughs> the, <laughs> there you go. The, another not gonna make fun of now, huh? Nah. <laughs> nah, another thing I did. Uh, um, actually, I, I cut out seed oils, um, oat milks, nut milks, things like that. So the base of my smoothie is coconut water. Mm, okay. Um, I do that. Uh, I cut out hard liquor. So, but don't 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 get it twisted. Wines. I'd be, be drinking all the time off wine. Say less. Okay, say less. Yeah, say less. Say so, less. So I'm not gonna sit here and act like a saint. Like I said, there's still another level I can go to. And Everybody, stuff like that, no one's perfect. Right. Yeah, no one's perfect. But but yeah, I mean the, the what true, was the thinking behind the seed oils and and the hard liquor? Um, well, hard liquor. I mean, you drink too much say, of it. Yeah, literally, you poison. You have the time hard. of your life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hard. Like, like no, listen, of, you make a lot of great memories with your friends. Yeah, <laughs> you know what the problem with that? Is. Or you like alcohol poisoning. Like literally, hard liquor is pretty self-explanatory. Um, and then what was the other thing you said? Yeah, you said the seed oils. Seed oils. Oh, it's a, it's about like uh, heart disease, how your body breaks it down. Mm. Um, you know, conflicting research talks about just how bad seed oils are for you, um, as opposed to animal fats, which you can get away with um, in moderation. And and that's what leads to pretty much it's beef, lamb, and fruit. Um, but that, like I said, ruminant animals with uh, multiple stomachs. What does ruminant mean? Multiple stomachs, they forage, they eat grass fed. Um, so buy grass fed, obviously. Um, but what what they eat, they're built to process and then they're the most nutrient dense um foods on the planet. So that's why it's beef, lamb, and, and fruit. But I prefer beef over lamb. Now you can also have like bison, elk, deer, shit like that. Yeah. I'm not a fan of those. We aren't a fan of those. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it's really it's I'm really listen to down a to Joe that. Rogan episode. <laughs> yeah, nah, like bow and arrow. Yeah, nah, <laughs> like all, all, all that is technically part of it, but like I don't like those. So personally it's beef, lamb, and fruit pretty like 90% of the time. And again, I'm not perfect. You may see me at Clinton Street on a cheat day having a waffle, but that's Or at Juliana's, you know. Juliana's is another cheat day thing. Um, but that's probably like once a month or so. It seems like you know a lot about nutrition. I mean, I, I I just know what I've spoken to several nutritionists, uh, learned from some people. Um, not an expert in the field, but trying to be an expert in in my own body and, and what feels good. And, and again, like you said, injuries are what really took me down that path. Yeah. So you know what I want to be good in the league for at least another five years, right? Oh, hey, like, hey, 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 ten? Uh, yeah, why not? Yeah, yeah. Oh, so five, eight, yeah, ten. Yeah, yeah, some. Yeah, 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 straight up. Get yeah, all of you. I need those. It. I need those top three uh, steak steak places though. Top three. Um, Coat, right here. So, uh, why didn't you take me there? Because uh, I'm poor. <laughs> what the fuck do you mean? Dude? Oh man! Hey, hey, nah, he hey. wild though. He wild. You gotta watch out for him. Spence gonna take us. Spence <laughs> gonna take us. Code, code is coast that spot. Um, if I'm gonna be like nostalgic, just because it is a spot that I was able to go to before I had money, because my parents took me there one time. Uh, Laurie's, and I thought about because of Chicago. Okay, yeah. yeah. So. Uh, and then um, another steakhouse. I actually like, uh, there's one in Boston called Moo. I like that one. I'll be walking over there. Then New Surrette's pretty cool, solid base spot. Um, oh, we got to go to these spots. Yeah, this yeah. Is, I, I'm just doing this purely so I can like go to a good, good steakhouse. Like, yeah. yeah, my buddy Spencer sent me oh, over we go, we, This nah, is my last yeah. question before we let Spencer go. Yeah, to we'll let you go, bro. <laughs> I see Spencer. True uh -huh. story. I'm in Chicago. I'm working out. I don't know if you remember this. I see, it's like, I don't know, maybe. Work out on some five on five shit. Just I don't know. We just in the gym. I think we had a, uh, I think we had USC. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I think we had USC. Now this, this version of Spence that that I'm that I'm I'm around this time is uh life beating them down a little bit. Been experiencing some things. You see it on them. You know what I'm saying? Different teams, different thing. Injuries here. You know what I'm saying? So to see, not even the finished product now. And to see how you was when you was in Chicago, just not knowing, coming like playing in the G League, you know what I'm saying? Like different respect, but mm. it's it, a grind. And Thank if you, you know, and if you know, you know, like it's a grind. The NBA yeah. is a grind. It'll beat you down physically and mentally. You know what I'm saying? So for him to take all those punches and keep going and keep proving, like, you know, guys get older and just, you know what, maybe I am what they say I am. You know, some motherfuckers in this mind, they got some. Soft, like a lot of NBA motherfuckers' minds are very soft, Extreme. very soft. So like to see where he was then, still with it, like man, in there with just you know, it, it wasn't even a big run and nothing. It was just 
some overseas guys. And but just to be in there, just to keep grinding, just to keep poking at it. I don't know what I'm poking on. I don't know what I'm doing, but fuck it. I'm going to just put my all into it and see now you deserve everything, bro. Real Thanks, shit. Man. No, real shit. Real shit. Real shit. Appreciate you, dude. Who's the, who's the toughest player to, to guard you in the NBA? Gotta say. <laughs> Come on, man. Come on, man. <laughs> set up right yeah, there. Especially after that, man. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You see yeah, how we so. set it up? Nah, 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 you have nah. to be nice. Nah, nah, hey. nah, that's wanna... the white shit. You don't hey, gotta be nice. Hey, hey, that's the nah, white nah, shit. Nah, Y'all nice. yo, yo, <laughs> understand, though, man, like, like, to get respect from OG, somebody that obviously had his own grind, made a way, been in here a long time, has a ton of respect in the league. Like, like peer respect is where, like, I draw That's validation where money now. come from. You know what I'm saying? Your homies think, they, your peers think you trash, your ass trash. I don't give a fuck how much yeah. money you got. Mm. Yeah. Straight uh, up. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Because like, I, know the, I know the front office ain't going to say shit. Yeah. Like, whatever. But your peers really sit you down and be like, yo, I seen it. Like, Appreciate that grind. I see yeah, it. Yeah, it's like, oh, damn, man. Especially when they older and shit like that. Like, yeah. when they young, they look up, all right, cool, whatever. You probably don't understand, but like, Older looking down, it's like thank you, man. Yeah, like man. sincerely, real shit. Well, peer to peer, I appreciate your grind, brother. <laughs> <laughs> thank, you, thank you for being here, bro. You're a fucking legend. Man, don't do your thanks, <laughs> thank man. you so appreciate much, bro. You appreciate, appreciate you. you. Mm. Appreciate you. Mm. I'll see you all soon, baby. Thank you, baby. Always. Appreciate thank you, you again, dog. No, no doubt. No, that was a blast. All right, guys, let's take a second and talk about more labs. Hey, Pat, I can't drink as much as I used to without feeling like shit. Even just a few drinks has me feeling like crap these days for example eagles game last night you drank some new Amsterdam vodka i had i had the boys over you know little sasquatch francis came over we watched the game we had a, a funny fun time this morning i wake up and i kind of felt a little bit like crap but luckily more labs has created this nifty lifesaver of a drink called morning recovery mm. that helps prevent rough mornings after drinking all you have to do is Take one drink of morning recovery while you're drinking or right before you go to bed. I've started to see this little blue bottle everywhere, tried it, and now I never want to drink without it. And that's my word. It contains super herbs, vitamins, minerals, all this kind of stuff that Spencer Dinwiddie's probably into, <laughs> and it's going to help you bounce back. And there's a proprietary blend of electrolytes that are going to help rehydrate you so you can have fun at night and feel good the next day. Just like you did when you were 21. No, oh, I'm cool. 21 is the Alpha Savage Year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, the Savage Years can continue because you can go to morelabs.com, M O R E L A B S.com, and use code PATBEV for 20% off your first order of morning recovery. Go to morelabs.com. PATBEV is the code, 20% off your first order of morning recovery. Get it today. Start feeling invincible and incredible Love today with More yeah. Labs. So sexy red, um, sexy red question. Sexy, before sexy, you start. Wait, before you start, before you start, before you start, start. Sex, start. sexy start. red or Taylor Swift. You can't do that because everyone, for some reason, everyone on the internet thinks I don't like black people. For some reason, I, I do share with you. I take thing of like me picking cotton just to you know I had a rosy on just to see how far we came and people oh man you with barstool he turned his back on doctor all oh, what's the guy they they, they think Dr. Umar Umar they every every <laughs> pic, I post a picture with my girl on a horse they think she's white she's not white I got damn like stop so uh Swift <laughs> <laughs> She mean? She's elite. What do you mean? <laughs> she writes her own songs. She she sings her like she's elite. Right. So who do you think wrote Ski Yeet? No, Sex Red. Yeah, exactly. There wasn't some songwriting factory of somebody okay. writing Ski Yeet for her. Sexy Red. Yeah. Is that sustainable? No. But I think that women rappers, uh, the throne gets passed around so much that it's almost unfair. Huh. Lil' Kim on the throne for a while. No, no, on the throne for a very long time. But then as soon as Nicki Minaj emerges- Oh, you forgot it. They, they, they killed her. And they have to pit them against one another. Mm -hmm. It's not like um, Biggie was out and then like somebody came out at, after Biggie and they're yeah. like, okay, Biggie can't exist now. Now Biggie sucks because this new person came out. Like that. that's not realistically yeah. how it works. Then Cardi B comes out uh -huh. and then it's like, Nicki Minaj isn't shit. All right, true. And so then I, like uh, Ice Spice is out. And then it's like then Sexy Red. You know, like right. there's gonna be a like there's it's always gonna be someone else that's like it seems like there can only be one, right. and it's not fair to and the I ladies. Went, and, and during that time while I was in Houston was the uh, 
Crayshawn comes out. Was the Beyonce concert. Mm. Mind you, I haven't really been in a city where the Beyonce concert, like, was happening. So you know me, I... Shelby, um, and what them tickets like for Beyonce, you know? And the number she gave me was all deservingly so. But I'm just happy for Beyonce. I'm happy that. Five figures? Ooh, I'm happy that she can like, one of the one of the black queens out there, one of the foundational queens out there who, you feel me? Like- Shout out to the black queens for, for real. Sure. Like, put put these type of numbers and like this type of gang on like concerts, that's, that's unbelievable. The amount of people that showed up, everyone showed up, all color sizes, everything. Like you loved everything about it. The whole city was straight Beyonce. You didn't have an outfit. You can go in for the NRG Stadium, get outfit. It was crazy. It was crazy, man. It was crazy. So shout out to Beyonce. Um, Shout out to the Black Queen. Shout out to Taylor Swift. We got, we got number love for everybody out here. Shout out to Sexy Red too. Um, I'm worried though that with Beyonce's situation, that Don't be worried. She's that fine. Ticketmaster is getting a lot of that money. Yeah. That these ticketing price, these ticketing Man, places this, are getting a ton of that this, money. This. Even Joe Biden this week was like, "We're worried that the ticketing apps are stealing too much yeah, money." Yeah, from probably a kids. little bit, but not. No, uh, no. Nah, nah, Beyonce go make sure she get all hers. Yeah, uh, Beehive go make sure she get all hers. She better. Otherwise, shout out to the Beehive. Be cracking too. heads. Shout out to the Beehive too, man. Beyonce or Taylor Swift. Shout out to the Beehive. <laughs> shout out to the B Beyonce or Taylor Swift. Wow. Beyonce. But at the age Taylor Swift is, and twenty two. Are we going now or are we going, you know what I'm saying? That's my question. Are we going now or are we going 22-year-old Beyonce? <laughs> That's fair. That's what I'm saying. I think Taylor Swift is actually like 34 or some shit. Not, not How old is Taylor Swift? 33? Damn, I'm fucking right on it. 33? Let's get our facts right. Okay. 33? 33-year-old Beyonce, 33-year-old Taylor Swift. Gotta go. 33-year-old no, Beyonce. I know, but Beyonce. the numbers say... Taylor? The numbers say it. But what numbers I are got, we looking at? I got the, the jersey just went up 400%. Kelsey. Yeah. Jason Kelsey. Or uh, Travis Kelsey. I mean. Travis. Tra Chill. You're trying to well, Travis is the one who's uh, having relations with her, but you happy for him? I'm happy for anybody who, choose, who, who chooses love. Yeah. I mean, all love here. Love, choose love, life, love choose game. love, love choose love a career. Game. Yeah. You know? And do everything out of love. Yeah, that's what I do. My I exclusively move out of love. Um I um you were I called you and uh, we had a nice talk. And then we were interrupted with the noise in the kitchen. And yeah. I got right on your top. Yeah. Who the fuck is that in the kitchen? The better be your wife. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I wasn't wrong about that, right? And it was my wife. Yeah, I'm just yeah, I I, I know <laughs> why are you you don't have to say that. Of course it was. But even her hearing that is going to be like uh why would anyone else be in the kitchen? Why they couldn't be like, oh, Pat is a great guy. That's what's up. He got my back. You see the difference how white people think of black people? Yeah, but why would I, why would there, why would you of, even, why would it even go through your mind that it could be someone else? No, I don't know. That would never go through my mind. You wouldn't, if someone's in my kitchen, clanging pots and pans together. I'd be like, who, oh, his wife is probably cooking and cleaning for him. You would not say you're a liar, bro. <laughs> what are you talking get on the pod and lie. Don't get on the pod and lie, bro. <laughs> no, I know that you. I, I know that your chef is cooking crazy stuff. But it, the the problem is though. Hey, we got a little beef in the house. I bet. I bet you have more than a little beef. Hey, got, I feel like you need. You and Mike Wallace need to go to a relationship court. No, no, no. We have a great relationship, but Mike is beefing with everyone in the house except me. <laughs> <laughs> He's beefing with chef. No, no. He's so, beefing with trainer. So, no, no, no. We got. We got a little. We got obviously the house. We got a. You feel me? We got a fun house. House is great. For uh, people that don't know, Mike Wallace, producer of the show, producer, of Philly the show. based guy, Philly based guy. He almost got fired, uh, but. <laughs> But you saved him. You saved him. We saved him. You said we saved him. He almost got creased. And then the way Dave was looking at him last week while he was here, it was for sure he almost got fired. But it's cool. So the dynamic in the house is very, it's very like, it's very different. Cause I have a Yorkie, Coop. Right. And Coop doesn't like Chef. Right. And, and Chef doesn't like Coop. Right. And Coop doesn't like my trainer, Julius. And Julius doesn't like Coop. Right. But Coop loves Mike. 
What color is Coop? But Mike loves Coop. What color is Coop? Coop has beef with Chef. And Coop, I mean, and, uh, no, no, no. Mike has beef with Chef and Mike has beef with Trainer. So Mike and Coop both don't like Trainer and <laughs> both got beef with Chef. <laughs> and both Chef and Trainer got beef with my favorite dog, Coop, and my favorite, second favorite white person, uh, <laughs> Mike. But a house divided cannot stand. I know. It's wild. You have to unify the house. No, no, no. It's crazy. And I'm, you know me, sometimes I like to unify it. Sometimes I like to little, stir it up a little bit. A little gas on the fire. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. keep stirring it up. Mike said you keep stirring it up. You got to. It's funny. <laughs> it's funny. It's funny. It's funny. So, uh, I mean, that's. I, I'm glad we came to Philly. That's why, why we came to Philly, too, for, uh, for you know, obviously basketball, but. You know, good vibes too. So we've been having a ton of extraordinary good vibes, vibes, vibes. Yeah, as, vibes. as it should be. Ton of vibes. Did, you, did you make it out for the Eagles game the other night? Uh, no, I um I took the last flight out uh, yesterday. Um, Monday. flight got delayed. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa! I knew I had something. <laughs> flight got delayed. Oh my goodness! I leave. So we find out baby girl fucked up her knee. I don't know. Last Thursday, because you were supposed to be at Pizza Fest. I was supposed to be at the Pizza Fest. Right, I couldn't come to Pizza Fest because I was, I had to, you know, I'm. You to I'm a, your I'm family. A, I'm a, no, I'm a, physical, I'm a physical therapist. Right, right exactly. Right, right. That was hyperbaric fine. chamber right. and all that. Just all that. So Friday, I, I'm like, man, I'm gonna get the 5 a.m. flight. You feel me? Like we go get out of Philly early. No one's traveling. It's a breeze. You will get to Houston eight o'clock. I'll be there. Pick baby girl up. Take her to school if I need to. Right. Bro, we go to the airport. Me and my girl Mandy. We go to the airport at five o'clock in the morning. And if anyone was there at the airport at five o'clock in the morning on a Friday, please comment the line. I've never been in a line this long in my being of life. What? The line was like two, three rows, the initial line. A row, like, just made a line somewhere. Turn over there. Is this to check your bags? No, no, this is the- uh, Security. Security. <sighs> Come around. Like, like we're just walking past each other. It's not even, like, anything that's separating us. We can, like, high five. Another line that comes around goes all the way back to the walking escalators, all the way back. I'm talking about, and it's people just walking all the way around and then turn. Like, it's no guidance. It's nothing. But people, the line is that long that you didn't even need it. Like, you knew, like, oh, you ain't getting in front of me. This line too motherfucking long. Now I've never been in the line that long. Wait, what about uh, TSA pre-check or clear or anything the line like was, that? The line, line was there. I don't, I don't have TSA. They don't have clear in Philly. That's what the guy, he yelled it to me. That's stupid, first of all. Philly's fucking up for doing that. No, that's that. not true. That's not true. I that's just, stupid as hell. They should have clear there. They should and, make it easier and, on the travelers. And he yelled, he yelled it to me, too. Like, I mean, and we got to get pre-checked, though. Guys like us, Hoopers, we need I'm, to Because I'm a clear guy, so I... Yeah, same. whoop de whoop wop de wop I'm usually wop de wop in right. the airport. And the, So what did you do? Did you miss flight? No, 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 no. I, I got there. Flight was at, uh, I don't know, 6. I got there like 4.45 because we had to check bags. And then, yeah, I waited in line for like... 45 minutes. I guess the, we were the last people on the plane. Like, literally almost missed our flight. My flying East Coast has been some of the toughest flying I've, I've ever experienced in my life. I come back, land. Can't land in Philly. Have to land in Newark. All right, cool. No problem. Again? Didn't this just happen to you? It literally just happened, bro. My, my, my flying the last month, I don't know what's been going on. But the weather okay. has been ass. I'm talking about weather. I can't leave Houston. Now, I'm talking to mom who's headed to Houston. She, yeah, my flight's delayed. Like, Damn, her flight delayed. She's coming here. I'm never leaving this motherfucker. I had a flight yesterday to leave here at 4.30, get here um, around 9. I got in my bed around 1, 1 a.m. I had to fly to Newark, drive from there all the way back home. It's been an experience, but I'm thugging it out. What'd you do? What? <laughs> I'm going to cry again. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not sure, bro. I like, you know what? Fuck that. No, I, I cry. I cry almost no, you don't every have to day. justify me. I crying. cry all you the time. I love me. crying. I don't need help. Right? I think it's healthy. I okay. think it shows you're in touch with your emotions. Yeah. I, I appreciate crying. So what did you do while you were in the line? Did anyone recognize you? Where was of anyone course. like Pat Bev? Yeah, uh, no, of course. And you know me, it's five o'clock in the morning. Pat Bev, and, and they don't just like you know what's up, Pat Bev. You cool? I see you, my boy. Especially in Philly. It's no, no. It's Yo, yeah, it, it, Yo, Pat Bev. It's straight like that. I'm like, what's up, my guys? Five a.m. What's up, Pat Bev? What's a holy shit, bro? That's Pat Bev. Like you know, so 
Yeah, people are people are excited, but uh, it's not exciting to be standing in a line like that. I think I saw somewhere that Philly's airport was was voted as one of the worst airport experiences. I, I, no, I don't know. I said it was voted that. I'm not saying yeah. that's European. I had a great, I had a great experience. It was just long as fuck. But what are you going to do in there at the airport? Five I would make a scene. I would stomp my feet and be like, uh, excuse me, can yeah. we do something about and, this? And I'm the guy who looks at that guy like, oh, yeah, classic white shit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> these white motherfuckers crazy. Karen. <laughs> Karen energy. Right, uh, 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 that's these white motherfuckers. Fuck crazy. Mom, Can you anybody? won't believe Mom, it won't believe you have that airport, man. What happened, baby? Some white man was going off on these motherfuckers. Start <laughs> filming. <laughs> yeah. Can so, anybody yeah. be a Karen or is that a I reserve like for shoes. white women? I like your shoes. You like these? We'll end there. Bye bye. All right. See you guys.